Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Budget Planning channel. I'm excited to be here. Um, ready to jump in and just um, keep setting up all my budget sheets. So the next step in my budgeting process after I get my monthly budget set up on my calendar, my monthly budget written out and see what I have um, for the entire month and make sure I have enough income covering expenses. Then I start my paycheck one and paycheck two happens so quickly for us that I haven't got to this part of the budget, which is setting up sinking funds and savings tracker. And you, when you do that, you have to use numbers from the previous month. This was my January sinking funds and savings tracker and to start your February um, uh, sinking funds and savings tracker because your ending balances are always your beginning balances of the next month. And since I do my savings tracker or savings and sinking funds on the last payday of the month, I have a little bit of time on when I can, when I need to film this, but I thought today would be a good day to go ahead and get it set up and ready and going before uh, the 19th gets here, which is the last paycheck for me and my family for this month. So here we go. Um, as you can see, I just wanted to show the example here where um, one month ties into the next month. So I'm gonna zoom you in for just a second, hold on. So as you're gonna see here in my uh, budget sheets that I sell in my Etsy store, I love these budget sheets. They really do keep me on track. And if you're interested in some budget sheets, uh, it's Lisa Lisa's Faith Budget Plan. There is a link in the description box below if you need that and um, go check it out. Um, but here we go. As you can see, my ending balance is now my new beginning balance. And then I will be filling in what I plan to add over here. And then later in this month, if we subtract anything out, um, I will do that. And then the ending will be March's beginning. So that's how this works for both of my categories for sinking funds and savings tracker. So um, just wanted to give you a close up. That's how it works. Now the numbers I get for adding in are also over here um, because they're the same every month. So I'm just going to copy these numbers over for my savings tracker or not savings tracker, sinking fund and start that. We'll work on the savings tracker a little bit later and I'll talk more about what I do with that. But for now, it's just about the sinking fund. So let me move these sheets out of the way and um, let's get started. So here we go. Um, Got my calculator over here. I'm going to start writing this out and I'll be right back. So I have every fill, everything filled in from this tracker to this tracker. And what I normally put in, I'm not going to total this up right now. Here's the reason. Um, when you go to your bank account and you're looking where you save your money, sometimes you get dividends and we get dividends and I don't have uh, that information right in front of me. So I will be totaling this up later, but I can tell you what I actually put in in these totals here. Okay. Every month I do budget for myself $468.66. So that is what this totals up to. Um, this is where I put a little bit aside every month into a savings account. I mean, it totals up to $468, but within that $468, $10 of that goes to Amazon Prime. Uh, 583 goes to Disney Plus. And what I do is I take the total that I need uh, for my once a year annual expenses, like Amazon Prime, it's 119 a year. I just round it up to 120 and divide by 12, and that gives me $10. And then one month, I'll just only put $9 in or something like that. And that will give me the 119 by the time September hits. And that's how you have to schedule and plan for when things come out. So this comes out in September. Disney Plus comes out in December, November. And so I put uh, $69.99 a year. So I just put $5.83 away. It's cheaper than putting $6.99 towards the monthly fee um, towards Disney Plus on some of the other um, monthly fees that they have on different platforms. Um, same thing with my Apple subscription. It comes out in December. Um, that is $69.99. So they're the same amount. I kind of run them at about the same 
amount every month. In total, so far this year, this is what I have. Uh, Orkin and Termite Spray. This is what the balance is currently in the account, and I am going to add $55. Um, that way I have enough money for my quarterly bug spray that I have them do and they come out and spray the house and outside and all around they check for um, bugs and insects and stuff and make sure they're not part or inside my house and then also um, termite um, we have a once a year contract they come out and check the traps I think they check the traps when they do the spraying too I'm not sure and uh, but they really do the focus once a year and that's an annual contract this will have enough money in it when it's time to pay the annual contract as well as those quarterly. Um, heating and AC, that's also a contract once a year that I go uh, pay into. They come out in the spring and the fall and maintenance. And that, this is just a good way for those once a year lump sums that you gotta pay that sneak up on you. And just putting a little bit of money aside for each of those categories, whatever they are, um, is really good to um, off so you don't have to have it interfere with your budget. Um, senior year, so this is a I've got five hundred dollars. I'm ready to add a hundred dollars this month. Senior year is my son's senior year next year, and he's going to have expenses coming up. We're going to have to pay for things, cap and gown, pictures, um, other senior stuff, class rings and photos, and you know all the fun stuff that you're supposed to have. Hopefully, senior year looks better than his junior year when COVID hit. So we'll see what happens in the fall. Um, if they'll be full time back in school, if we can meet in person and have a real ceremony uh, at the end of the school year, or maybe virtual, I don't know. It depends on how well this, um, how the pandemic is panning out uh, by June of next year. So hopefully, hopefully we'll have something fun. We'll see. Um, cell phone tech, this is just a revolving one. I just keep adding to it and every once in a while we buy some technology and then deplete it and then fill it back up. I put $100 away from that. Vacation, Christmas, um, and we want to save up for a hot water heater 8 to 12, down, 12 years down the road. So <laughs> that way we can pay full price and not have to worry about homeowners insurance or anything. I just don't want to deal with all that. I just want to buy it, tell the plumber to put it in and move on. So there's that. Um, and I put my total right here because it's a short list of sinking funds. Um, my sheets do allow for a lot longer, I think over 20 lines there. And I can also do the totals down here at the bottom, but sometimes it's just easier up here at the top and it fits on the screen. So that is my sinking funds. Um, I will go back and add dividend. I will total this up. I will add whatever the dividend is to this number and that will be the new amount deposited in the sinking fund savings account. Um, I will subtract out anything that comes out of this column by the, um, when it happens, um, I do believe we're due for another spray. So that'll be $88 coming out of our Orkin and I'll have a new balance for the end of the month. Now that is sinking funds. I run my savings tracker the same way as a sinking fund. So I'm going to move these sheets out of the way. I'm going to put this right here. And this was January savings tracker. And that is what we have left or what we ha are ending our month with. So let's go ahead and look at this. I've already got the beginning balances. And since these numbers match, and I'll show you it like that, 1,000, 2,000, 706, 25, uh, 2,783, um, 637.49 and $4. Oh, I kind of wrote those in a different order. So my total was $7,130.74. So now I don't typically put any addition to my savings tracker until I actually transfer the actual funds. But I will talk about things that may be happening. So my starter emergency fund, I don't actually adjust for that. Um, unless I have to use part of that $1,000 for an emergency. Now I am working on saving our six months expenses in our savings account. Now this is one savings account. My uh, sinking funds is a separate sinking uh, savings account and it's all one savings account. So I don't have a bunch of little savings accounts. I just have one and it goes into one pot. 
but I have them categorized in that pot. So this $1,000, $1,000 is this portion of the um, total here. So um, my goal has been, and what I've been working on is $1,000 a month into savings, which has been working. Um, and I've been having since December for our uh, six month emergency fund. So I hope to do at least another $1,000. Actually, I hope to do more than that. I hope to do $1,630 because my husband got overtime and we promised each other that we would do use the overtime in savings um, for six and it was $630. But I need to see his pay stub to make sure I'm reading what I'm reading correctly. Until I get that pay stub, I don't know exactly how much his overtime was. Because sometimes they give us reimbursements and that has to go in this travel expense reimbursement. Now you're going to see later this month, well, I'm actually I can write that down now, um, $250. Because that has already come out of our checking account, so that goes has to be deducted from this savings and counted towards our checking. Um, so I'm going to reduce this portion of our savings um, because that's the whole point of having a travel expense savings. Um, and then later, I, if I add more or replace it or replenish it, I'll put that number in here. But I do know at this moment in time, $250 came out and I will be um, use, using that to pay for in our checking budget. So here we go. Overpayments. Um, we still have that in our savings. Now it's categorized separately until I know when they're taking it out of the checking or a paycheck for my husband. Um, right now, I haven't got the pay stub. I will get it tomorrow. And once I have that pay stub, I can see whether they've already taken this amount out or not. I can't tell by the deposit my husband has. So I'll be looking at that carefully. If they've already taken it out and my husband got overtime, then this becomes a wash and I will be moving this amount to my six months expenses. And then um, because I can tell my husband's paycheck is $630 more with overtime in it, I'm also going to try to add that as well. So that's, that could be $1,200 more on top of the $1,000 I already want to put. So that would be awesome this month and uh, really bulk up that six months expenses. Once I have my six months expenses, that's going to be awesome. And then any dividends that come into the account, I will put right here. And that will be that. So this one, I can't really fill out too much until things actually happen. So it's usually the end of the month that I have my savings tracker filled out. But they're set up, they're ready to go, and all the totals will be right here. And uh, I will show that at the end of the month once we do all the numbers. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped you um, understand how you can do your sinking funds and savings tracker and all that for your budget sheets. Um, I'm gonna head zoom you guys out. And if you have questions or comments about sinking funds and savings tracker, um, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to help you out or just have a conversation about it. And if you do it a different way or have different ideas, I would love to hear about it. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my videos, um, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Bye.